Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters and it is a Friday, not a Thursday. Sorry for the technical difficulties yesterday, having to reschedule to today. Um, it was kind of funny actually, so we're sitting in here, we're ready to go, I'm type chatting, everything is great. And then three minutes before three, the power goes out and we're like, uh oh. And so we went ahead and canceled it. Um, that's one of the benefits of being in an old building, I suppose. So uh, it is what it is. But anyway, so glad that you could still join me today and for this week's live chat, because we're gonna talk about quilting pillow panels. And I've got some pictures and examples to show you should you need some inspiration for that. First things first, I said in an earlier live chat that one lucky person who purchased a panel would get my quilted sample from the videos, the ones that I quilted throughout the videos. And that lucky person is Ellen Schmidt. So Ellen, I'll be sending you an email. Hopefully you're okay with binding because it is not bound, but it's all quilted and hopefully it can be inspirational for you or at the very least you can, you know, turn it into a poncho or something. So very cool. And then at the end of this live chat, I'll tell you how you can win a couple of the quilted samples I'll be showing you that are pillow panels. So giveaways all around today. I'm very, very excited. So real quick, I'll tell you about the next couple weeks of live chats. If you ever have time to get on about half an hour before and type chat, that's usually where I get my suggestions for upcoming live chats. And so next week, I'll be sharing tips for quilting on a long arm. I know that's not specific to everybody, but even if you don't have a long arm, it might be fun to watch how it goes, how it happens. But if you do, I'll share some um, tips and suggestions on how to be more successful with that. And then the next week, I'm gonna do swirling feathers or those branching kind of feathers that I did on Tula Pink's quilt. There's been a specific request for that. I'll show you how to quilt it. It's not as easy as a regular feather, but it's not difficult once you get the hang of it. So that will be fun. And then the week after that, I'll be doing thread painting. Again, another request from the type chat. So super excited to be doing that next Thursday, uh, Thursdays at 3 p.m. Central. So very, very excited about that. Now let's get back to the topic at hand. Um, first of all, what I'm gonna be talking about, hold on one second, sorry, wrong picture. I'm gonna be talking about quilting pillow panels, but really quick, if you were um, on my YouTube channel, you might have noticed that I dropped an episode of The Midnight Quilter. It's been a minute since I've done that. So that is my New Year's resolution to try to get more of those out, kind of alternating between challenges and Midnight Quilter episodes. And so this one was about faded stripes. And um, it was really fun to kind of do this because one thing I admit in the video is that I am not good at picking out fabric, and that is the truth. I'm not saying I don't enjoy it, because I do enjoy picking out the fabric, I'm just not good at it. <laughs> I, I struggle with it. Um, usually three fabrics, I'm good. And usually those three fabrics are blue, gray, and another color, as you can tell here. Um, so it was just fun to work with a quilt that only had three fabrics to kind of take the stress out of it. Um, and so I had this version, but I also showed an alternate version as well. So, you know, not everybody has the same colors as I do. So if you haven't checked out that episode, check it out. It's pretty fun. I introduce you to Irene, who helps me with the Midnight Quilter and helps me pick out fabrics if there's more than three. And it's just kind of fun to make. And if gotta let you know i am giving away a faded stripes kit so if you go to that video within the next couple days leave a comment next week i'll be announcing a winner for that so another way to win some more stuff so that's the the faded stripes but let's get back to the topic at hand right let's talk about those pillow panels um, that we had as part of the fabulous feathers challenge so that was a video series where we talked about quilting feathers and we learned all different ways and during the challenges i usually have you know one bigger panel that you can purchase but I know that some people don't want to quilt something so big. So it was fun to come up with some pillow panels that kind of look the same, that coordinate with it, but on a smaller scale. So I'm going to show you how I quilted these panels and maybe give you some suggestions on why you might find them helpful. So pillow panels are just kind of what the name suggests. They're pillow sized panels. And those are great for those of you that don't want to tackle larger projects. Maybe you need like a quick sense of completion. Uh, maybe you have a small throated sewing machine and when you're learning how to free motion quilt, maybe a smaller project will be a little bit more helpful. Um, I will say though, even if your pillow panel is smaller, give yourself some extra room around with the backing and the batting so you have something to grab onto. I think sometimes, um, especially on smaller projects, you're going to be running up along the edge a lot. And so give yourself a little bit of extra around the outside to hold on to. Now, when it comes to how you quilt it, it's totally up to you. There's, there's no wrong or right answers, obviously. And so what I did is I kind of used inspiration from the videos, uh, the, the topics, and quilted the panels, and so we can kind of talk about that. 
Another thing that's great about smaller panels is you can piece them to make a larger quilt. So if you want the experience of free motioning a quilt, because you want to deal with the seams that you're going to have to deal with and you're you know, finishing the borders and all those things, it's kind of a great jump start um, to that project. And so I put together this kit. It's the Luminous Bouquet Kit. So it features the Luminous Pillow Panels in the cool colorway and then some coordinating prints. And if it looks familiar, it's because it's the same pattern that I had for the flora and foliage challenge using those pillow panels. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, doing something like this is not only great for getting used to a bigger project, but you can also think of it like a sampler quilt for your quilting, like a sampler quilting. You can try something different in each block. You can experiment, challenge yourself to try some different techniques. And then when you're done, you can kind of have like this visual thing that shows you the different stuff you've done. Because I know that sometimes when I get to quilting, it's easy to kind of like forget all the designs I've ever learned. Um, so I do have a pattern for that. If you've already bought the pillow panels or you want to try that out, or you have a large print that you want to show off, this is a great easy quilt. It just uses half square triangles. Uh, but there's that flora and foliage colorway as well. So if you did that challenge, you probably recognize it now. Um, just same, same idea, just different fabrics. And um, although I do have to admit, I picked out all the fabrics for this quilt. So maybe I am getting better than I thought I was. So huh, interesting. All right, so let's get back to the pillow panels. So the pillow panels feature that you know center motif that's in the bigger panel, but just smaller. But even though that center motif is smaller, it's still good to quilt. It's not too small to quilt. I know sometimes when we work with smaller panels, the, the pieces or the areas are so small, it's hard to fit, you know, fill that in. But this particular one works great with all the feather designs we've learned. So if you watch the first video or the second video where I talk about quilting feathers in blocks and in different variations, you can definitely do that with these pillow panels. And in this pink one, I've done the more custom feather in the horizontal and vertical. And I just did a nice basic feather in the um, Kind of diagonals but we learned a lot of variations throughout this challenge so try one and you know a different one in each area it's it's definitely going to be a lot of fun so we can kind of zoom in and look a little closer to this so unlike the large panel which has multi colors in that center the pillow panels are more you know monochromatic they have the similar colors which means you don't have to change thread color as much if at all now I do want to point out that in the panel that I quilted, I quilted it with green thread so that you could see the quilting. Probably not suggested for the, you know, beginner quilter, but it is fun to be able to see where you're going and what the quilting looks like. Um, I did actually record myself quilting this. Maybe eventually I'll release it as a video so you can see it come together. But really everything that we see throughout these pillow panels, we've already seen throughout the challenge or the video series. So you'll find it, find it helpful there. When I'm working with panels, especially ones that look like they're pieced, so I'm not talking about like pictorial panels with like the, the wolf with the moon behind it and all that kind of stuff. If it looks like it's pieced, I like to pretend though, quilt it as though it's pieced. So if this were an actual piece center, I probably would use some echoing around those blocks to kind of highlight it. And that's what I've done in this one. So focusing the feathers in the blocks in the center, incorporating echoing, we know I love to do that, and then having that dense filler. But just like we learned in another ep or earlier uh, video from this challenge is if you don't have enough room for a whole feather, just put a half a feather in, right? So along that corner, around that corner where I just have the partial block, I've just quilted half a feather in there. So you can definitely fit those in where, where you see fit to do it. And again, just a closer up of the filler. I, I say it so many times and sometimes I feel like I should stop saying it, but it's so important. What you put around a design or around a block is just as important as what you put into it. I was pretty happy with the block that I quilted, so I used a really dense filler and that echoing to just make that quilting pop in the blocks or in the fake blocks. So when you're, when you're choosing your filler, if I didn't love how it turned out in the center, I definitely wouldn't have echoed it. And I definitely wouldn't have done a tight swirl in there. So I would have done something bigger, more similar in size, and, and hope that it kind of all blends together. So just know that you don't have to quilt it to death just because I did. And it's a little closer up picture. I love quilting swirls because they're just nice and quick to quilt. They're one of my go-to designs, but of course any filler would work. We learned the feather meander filler, which is great. Um, it's kind of hard to fit in these smaller areas. So if you want to practice that technique, I would just quilt it over the whole pillow panel and, and until you get the hang of it. All right, then I also quilted the cool colorway as well. So um, one of the benefits of having to 
cancel yesterday is I got to close a couple more samples so we can have. So these are the ones I'm actually going to be giving away. I'll tell you how to get that at the end. And I kind of used the same idea of different techniques that we could learn throughout the series in the pillow panels. So let's kind of see what that looks like. Um, in this one, we can see in the blocks, I didn't quilt feathers at all. I did some geometric dot to dot designs and I saved the feathers for the outside. We learned in an earlier video how to fit feathers in those irregularly shaped areas. We learned how to fit them in, how to make them look like they're going behind. And so I thought, what a better challenge than trying to fit these feathers in that area. When I'm picking a different design, right, I know I'm going to do feathers in the background, so what should I do in the block? Usually, generally, I like to pick the opposite of what I've just quilted. That's not a rule for anybody but me, but that's kind of the rule I follow. It helps give me a direction to point, or a direction to head in when I'm trying to decide what I want to quilt. So if I'm quilting curvy feathers and swirls, well, why not do some dot-to-dot -dot quilting inside the blocks? And the pieces or the design of this just lends itself so perfectly to that. So we can kind of zoom in closer and see that feather in that irregular area. I'm using the fake seam of the fake block to um, act as the spine of my feather and quilting those petals coming out from it. If this were an actually pieced quilt, this is going to draw attention to that part of the block. So this is something I might do around my favorite color of the panel, my favorite part of the block, or maybe just the part of the block that's actually pieced right. Those of you that have watched these a while know that I'm not the most accurate piecer. So I'm just really good at highlighting the ones that are good and just leaving out the ones that aren't that are not. Um, so it's, it's a great way to draw attention to areas that I want to show off. Now, I should probably pause for a second. If you're watching this live, um, you can be sure to type in your questions because Jessica's here kind of compiling them for me. That way I can answer them live. One of, the, one of my favorite things about doing the live chats is being able to address your questions right then. Kind of makes it more like a class, more like we're hanging out. All right, back to the panel. So again, there's that feather. I did it on all four diagonals. And then again, that nice swirl, filling it in and then I echoed that feather to show it off. So again, using echoing to kind of highlight the, the feather instead of the block. Because in this instance, I mean, I could have echoed around the point of the blue part, but that's not really the most important part. The feather is the most important part in this particular one. And these examples, I used a light blue thread, so it blends in a little bit more, but still has a little bit of contrast so you can see it in the pictures. For the dot-to-dot -dot quilting, I just used my ruler, I connected points on the blocks to create that shape and just had a lot of fun um, coming up with different variations of that. I have a whole video series about it. It's one of those techniques that once you get the hang of, it's really easy. So if you need something to get you through until I get to the next challenge, um, the dot to dot one would be a great option. All right, and then we can look at the teal one. This one is my favorite colored one, of course. I love the teal, I love the blue, so pretty. Um, but this time I did feathers, I kind of took inspiration from the feathers in borders episode or video and then also fitting it in irregular areas as well. The difference here is instead of using the feathers to highlight the center, I'm using the feathers to highlight the corners. I like how it gives it a framing effect. It still does show off the fake block in the center, but just a tiny little bit of a different twist by placing them in a different area. So let's kind of look at that a little closer. So here I'm incorporating the half feather in that corner piece like we saw. The only difference is instead of using the outside as a spine, I'm using the inside and then quilting the other half of the feather in the background. Uh, I love to do this because it, it really helps kind of, I don't know, draw attention to that area. It kind of completes design. And I love to say, if you really want to quilt a feather somewhere, chances are you can figure out how to squeeze it in. And this is a great way to squeeze it in. So just quilting it around that kind of corner section. In the border video, we talked about how you can just quilt feathers in the corners if you want to create that cool effect. Here, there is a little bit of piecing that I'm following, but it still follows the same idea of turning the corner and filling in that, that kind of area. So whether or not your border is continuous or it comes to a point, you can make those petals fit it just how you want it to. And so much fun and so easy to do once you know how to quilt the feather. In the center, I kind of went back to what I did in the very first one, quilting the custom feather and the basic feather, just because I, you know, I like those two and I thought it worked really well. And I spent most of my time and effort on the corner and that tiny pebble filler. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna take it kind of easy for myself in the center. So you don't have to do difficult stuff over the whole quilt. So if you have a technique that's a little bit easier to you, use it in a couple places so that you can have a bit of a, 
a moment to kind of relax as you're quilting, if that's possible. What I also love about feathers is you can't just look at a design by itself. You kind of have to take it in context of the rest of it. Like what happens when you continue that? And I love how quilting that custom type feather in the center, how it comes to the center, it kind of almost makes a motif there. And so it's really kind of fun how those all come together in the center there. Um, again, you could, I could have done a different variation that we learned. I could have, I was kind of toying with the idea of just quilting a half of one, but it was getting late, so I figured I should just do something nicer and easier for me. And that kind of zooms in and lets you see a little bit of how those come together. I love it. This is, this is gonna really draw your eye to the center. So if you're quilting, let's say a quilt that has a lot of blocks, maybe doing something a little bit more intricate in the center of the quilt will help draw attention to that and then just doing it all over, over the whole thing. So even if you had several blocks, you don't have to do it over the whole, for every single one. And then I think just another picture. This one is my favorite. And then in the background, I did pebbles and swirls, that kind of tight filler. I just loved how it makes those feathers pop out. It kind of just makes the feathers in the center pop out. I just, I just loved how it turned out. So I tell you, sometimes when you quilt quilts, you're not happy with how it turns out, but sometimes you quilt them and you are. And so I was super happy with how those pillow panels turned out. Um, I know that's a, a lot of quick pictures to look through. Hopefully that was some kind of, uh, inspiration, but when you're looking at your panels or your quilt tops and you're trying to decide how to quilt it, you can apply things you've learned in other areas. So let's say even though we're quilting this feather on this kind of pillow panel, that doesn't mean we can't apply it to different areas. And so kind of give yourself a little bit of a challenge. I know that can be scary, but I like to think like, okay, how can I take this and fit it in this area? And sometimes that's where that innovation comes out and that fun kind of like light bulb goes off and you find out those cool things. Um, if we do still have some pillow panels available, so all the things you're seeing in the video, you can check the description box below and um, you can find all that. I am gonna be giving away, I'm gonna take that blue and teal pillow panel, I'm gonna cut it in half, and I'm gonna give them each away to the two lucky winners. So all you have to do to enter is to like this video once I'm done live, that's on, once I'm not live, like the video and leave a comment. And next week at the live chat, I'll announce two lucky winners who will get yet again another unbound quilted sample. So hopefully that will work for you. So hopefully you have been writing your questions down. Jess, do we have some to answer? Thank you, ma'am. I saw lots of, um, I could kind of see the questions, but I can't read them, but I see lots of questions. I'm like, ooh. All right, new first question. When are my new rulers coming out? Well, remember I said they're coming out in October. Oh, wait, it's not October. They're coming, they're coming. Um, we're waiting, 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 waiting. So hopefully soon. And if they are out in time, I can't, I'm gonna try to incorporate them in the uh, next challenge because they do some really cool stuff and they would work right with the fillers. I can't, trust me, I can't wait to tell you. I can't wait, it's gonna be fun. Okay, uh, question, do I always use the same filler for the background? I'm assuming like in all of the background. Sometimes, it depends. Um, using the same filler in all the background is gonna just kind of smash that background down so that what you're quilting it around pops out. In general, I want that filler to be kind of consistent in texture. I don't, in that instance, I don't want it to be overly ornate or draw attention to it because I'm trying to draw attention to the feather. However, if I'm quilting a background that's like a large background or I have a lot of area to fill in and I wanna add interest with the filler, then that's when I would switch between designs or combine or you know switch up the size and i'm i'm tentatively thinking 80 percent sure uh, my next light my next free motion challenge will be fillers so we're going to learn tons of fillers and, and how i use them in different ways so hopefully that works out um i think it's going to be fun so the answer do i always use the same filler in the background it depends sometimes i do sometimes i don't it just depends on the quilt and really how much time i have to finish the quilt that does play into it too what is my go-to thread color to blend overall? Oh, so glad you asked. So I, I love threads, we know this. It, they are the best. I love threads like people love fabric. My favorite thread color would be yellow, like a light yellow, because it blends over a lot of colors. And if you haven't tried it before, you might be thinking that I'm smoking some dope, but that is not the case. It does look really great. When you put that light yellow, it just blends in I use it on white fabrics, I use it on any lighter fabrics, and it just really works really well. Um, so, like Lemon Ice from Glide, Yellow Whisper, that works well as too. Um, if, if I'm wanting it to blend, I'm looking at the value of the quilt, and I'm picking a neutral in that color. 
if that helps. So if I were working on this and I wanted to pick one color to blend over the whole thing, I probably would go with a light, light pink, something that's not going to be too um, distracting in the light, but not too distracting in the dark. So that's kind of how I would do that. Or a light gray would work. Um, or you know, something like that, but like a light tan. I have a lot of, I have a lot of go-to thread colors, so it's like picking a, a favorite kid. It's, it's really hard to do sometimes. Um, do I outline the fake block before I quilt inside the block? It depends. No, I'm just kidding. I do always um, stitch in the fake ditch because I love the way it looks and it makes it look pieced. So if you need a last minute gift, stitch in the ditch, quilt it, and then they're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Don't tell them it's a panel. Let them think you pieced it. I won't tell on you. Um, sometimes I'll do it before I quilt the block and sometimes after. It just depends on how I'm working my way through the quilt. I use that stitching in the ditch to um, not only make it look good because I like how it looks, but it helps me move my way around the quilt. So if it's better for me to stitch in the seams and then quilt it and then move on, I'll do that. Sometimes I'll quilt it and come back. It just, it depends. And it also depends if I've had a glass of wine or not, wine that night or not, because sometimes I forget. Okay, what is my favorite long arm? Yeah, we're gonna be talking about that next week. Um, I use a handy quilter of Ante. It's my favorite, and uh, to be fair, I am a handy quilter dealer. I've been affiliated with them for almost 10 years, and I love leather products. But we'll talk more about that during next week's live chat. It's not going to be brand specific. It's just going to be tips on long arming in general, but I'll definitely answer any questions you might have. All right, does the free motion quilting make the quilt stiffer? I love this question. So when we make quilts to give away, we want them to be like a hug, right? We want them to be like cuddly and have this moment. Um, and when you get done quilting, it's going to be stiffer for sure, because you've taken that fabric and you've put a bunch of thread through it. So it's going to be a little bit stiffer. But as the person uses the quilt, it's going to soften up and, and get that cuddly kind of feel. Um, I will say that using a natural fiber batting will help that. So if I was going to make a quilt for a little one, one of my nephews, or and I want it to be cuddly, I would use like cotton batting or maybe like a wool, because that's going to have that nice drape. But if I want something that's going to resist creasing, like maybe it's going to hang on a wall or I'm going to travel with it or it's something like that, I'll use polyester or poly batting. It, it doesn't matter. Um, so yes, it does make it stiffer, but it softens up with use. Um, and I always tell people like when I give quilts, I'm like, you have to, you have to use it to make it feel really soft. Um, I think I've told this story before, but I gave my son a quilt and he wanted to know why it wasn't as soft as the one on my husband in my bed. And I'm like, well, we've had that one for like 20 years. <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice and soft. You have to use it up. Second question, follow up. I like it. After washing the quilt, will it soften up? Yes, it will a little bit. It will get that crinkly look, but ultimately it's with love and use that gets it that kind of broken feeling. It's just like shoes, right? Or clothing. They look nice and, and stiff, but man, you get that pair of jeans that you love because they're nice and broken. It's the same idea. So it will definitely do that. All right, next question. What size needle do I use on my long arm? It depends. I tell you, I can just answer that for everything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The size needle you use depends on the type or the weight of thread that you're using. Most often I use a 16 or an 18 needle because I'm kind of playing within the 50 to 60, 50 to 40 weight thread. That's kind of where I hang out. But if I were gonna go really thin or thicker thread, I'd have to change the size of the needle. So it really just depends on the kind of thread. Speaking of weight of thread, I love how you've organized these. These are all nice like they go right together. What weight of thread do I use on the top and bobbin? You know the answer. It depends. Okay. In general, it depends. I, I do like, in general, I like to use a 40 or 50 weight on top. And that's what I tell all my new long armors or new machine quilters. 40 or 50 weight is strong enough to handle the machine quilting, but it's not so thin that it's finicky. I don't want, you know, when, especially when you're learning how to free motion quilt, you don't want to go right into those specialty threads. Um, so I, that's kind of where I hang out, especially the more videos that I do, the more I want you to be able to see the quilting. And so that 40 weight, that glide thread, I love that little bit of sheen. Um, but I, listen, I use all the threads. I like all the threads, the mono poly, the glitter thread, all that stuff. So it just depends. And then on the bobbin, so I have become addicted to pre-wounds. This is, this is a shameful thing. Not, not, it's not really shameful, but I used to always match the bobbin thread color to the top. So now I just use pre-wounds. It's a 60 weight thread. So it's thinner, which means more thread gets on that pre-wound. Yes, love it. And then I use just a color like that is a, I have a lot, like all the neutral colors and then whatever one is in the value. So if, if I use this as an example, if I'm using light pink, on the top, I have a light gray and I have a white. I might use a white on the bobbin just because it's similar in color. But again, guys, that's just my preference. That's just what I do. 
don't feel like you have to do to have to do that. You can do whatever you want. Did I use the blue thread in the blue areas and white in the background? I did not. So all of these pillow panels I quilted with one color. So this one got the green, we saw that all over. And then same on the other two, I just used light blue over all of it. And it wasn't too distracting in the background. Um, I, I think that's what's really cool about thread, especially when you have just the one you know thin piece laying out there. It kind of, it's how color, it's, I think it has something to do with the color and the way our eyes see it. It just kind of takes on what it's by. And that light blue, even though it was slightly darker than the uh, light gray background, it wasn't too drastic. And so you didn't get um, a lot of that distraction there. I will tell you though, that I didn't pick designs that had a lot of thread buildup. Even though I was doing those feathers, it has like one backtrack, but I'm not doing something with a lot of thread buildup on it, like pebbles, because that's where that thread really will start to pop out. So if you are gonna have to use a thread color that contrasts, pick designs that don't have a ton of traveling and you'll, you'll be happier with it. At least that's what I think. Again, I'm only the expert of my opinion. So I hope that that was helpful for you if you're looking at pillow panels, whether they're mine or just fabric that you have. Ultimately, the best thing to practice on is whatever you will practice on, because it does take practice, but not a ton of practice to get better at free motion quilting. So hopefully um, you're feeling inspired to go quilt those panels you might have laying around. Again, I will be giving away two of the quilted panels unbound um, next week. So after I'm done, after I log off, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment and I'll pick a winner next week. And then again, um, be sure to check out every Thursday, 3 p.m. Central, unless there's a power outage uh, for the live chats. I have really enjoyed doing these over the past year and I'm just, I'm flattered that I get to do it, that you guys will watch me. So I appreciate it so much. Well, I hope you all have an awesome, wonderful, warm weekend. It's pretty chilly here. And I will see you very soon next week for next week's live chat. Until then, everybody, happy quilting.